Get ready to elevate your gameplay as we shine a spotlight on some of the best lots to play on within The Sims 4. And we're going to take a look at 15 different lots spread out across 12 different worlds. Just a quick note that this is just my opinion on some of the best lots in the game, but please feel free to let me know your own favourites in the comments down below. Also keep in mind that I'm not taking the houses that are built into consideration, but rather I'm looking more so at the lot's location, and in particular what nearby features make it stand out amongst the rest of the lots in the game. And with that, let's jump into it. First up is Daisy Hovel, which is a 30 by 20 lot located in the Foundry Cove area of Willow Creek. While at first this area seems a bit bland, it's worth noting that the rather large and detailed tree to the left of the house is the secret entrance to the hidden world of the Sylvan Glade. And this is an absolutely gorgeous nature filled world right at your doorstep with a stunning pink landscape, multiple fishing spots and lots of plants to pick. Living in this neighbourhood means it's just one loading screen away rather than two, which we love. Another big perk of living on this lot is that just to the northeast of it is a small communal gardening area, and it's both of these things that make this generally unassuming lot's location a lot better than it first seems. It's also worth noting that the Garden Essence lot just next door is a larger 40 by 30 lot, but it is slightly further away from the Hidden World entrance. Next, we're heading over to Oasis Springs to look at another base game standout, and we're going to focus on the Affluista Mansion residence where the Landgrab family live. And this is located within the Acquisition Butte area. Now the main perks here are that you get a large 50 by 50 lot, and that if you follow the path that snakes around to the back of the lot, you will see a little cave-like entrance. And this leads you into the hidden world of the Forgotten Grotto, essentially adding a very mystical and ominous area right at your doorstep. It's a great place to explore for collectibles and to go fishing, or even just for storytelling in having a secluded place to escape to. It really is easy access to this hidden world that can make this lot so much fun to play on. It's time to shine a light on Windenburg from the Get Together expansion pack. And in particular, we're going to focus on the Crumbling Isle area, which is made up of a small group of lots. In particular, I want to hone in on two of them. Firstly, the Von Windenberg Estate, which is a massive 64 by 64 lot, and which is located on a sort of cliff peninsula. I might have described that very weirdly, so apologies, but I hope you know what I mean. It makes the area here feel very grand and castle-like, which provides a fun atmosphere to play in. On top of this, just behind the lot is a secret entrance to the Bluffs lot. And while you can just travel to the Bluffs normally from the world map, this can still be quite handy for storytelling. The second lot in this area that I want to talk about is called Dock Den. And this 30 by 20 lot in particular has an awesome beachfront area that makes you feel like you're living on some sort of remote island, with a wharf and many fishing spots providing a bit of utility to the space. My only wish is that you could swim around this area, which sadly you cannot. Let's head to San Maishuno now, which is the world that comes with city living. Honestly, all the house lots and apartments are great places to live here, as each and every location within San Maishuno feels so alive and dynamic with lots to do in every area. In particular though, I want to hone in on the 30 by 20 Sky Fitness lot. If you decide to remove the very average looking gym on the lot, then you really do have a jaw-dropping location. Not only are you right in the middle of the uptown area, but from the back of the lot you have the most jaw-dropping panoramic city views that really just elevates the lot even further. And it's the combination of an engaging neighbourhood and top tier view that makes me feel like this is such a standout lot to play on. Hopping over to Brindleton Bay from Cats and Dogs, and we're going to shine a spotlight on the Dead Grass Discoveries lot located on Dead Grass Isle. This is a museum lot, but it's in an incredibly cool location, essentially being the lone lot on a rather large island. It makes it awesome for if you wanted to play on the lot with a family who seemingly owned their own private island. The lot itself is medium sized, being 30 by 30, but there are so many cool things close by, 
There's a wharf, there are paths to jog and explore on, areas to fish, and even the awesome lighthouse, which you can climb to the top of and have woohoo in. Tucked away amid lots of trees, there's a pet graveyard, and of course, being an island, there are beachfront areas. But sadly, you cannot swim in the water around this island. Overall though, this lot has so many features nearby to really elevate your gameplay. Hopping over to Strangerville from the Strangerville game pack and we're going to take a look at the teeny tiny 15 by 20 lot called Slip 42, which is located within the Strangerville Plaza neighborhood. This lot is right in the middle of a fenced off area that is filled with camper vans. And this in itself really brings a lot of character and quirk to the area making it feel almost as if you're living on a campground of sorts. Of course, you also have to keep in mind that an extra layer of creepiness is added to this with all of the infected sims roaming around Strangerville, and it just provides the space with a truly unique look and feel. Now let's take a look at the gorgeous world of Sulani that comes with island living. There are two lots here that I particularly love. First up is the 30 by 20 Lagoon Look Lot located in the Ohan Ali Town neighborhood. This is a rather central lot in the neighborhood and it has a great balance between the area of the lot on the beach and the area of the lot in the water. On top of this, the neighborhood it's in is very dynamic with festivals regularly popping up on various days around the area, which keeps things incredibly interesting. Not to mention the gorgeous lagoon to swim, snorkel and chat to dolphins in that is literally on your doorstep. I also want to call out the key point lot within Moi Pel Am. This is a relatively large 40 by 30 lot on your own private island, and it can be a really fun place for your sims to live off the grid. From it, you can quickly swim to the mainland where there's a waterfall that you can look for frogs in, use to shower, or even live your best sexy life and have woohoo in. There's also a mysterious cave to explore and a bubbling volcano to visit. And to add to this, if you've cleaned up Sulani, then you can also find the albino dolphin and occasionally there will be the turtle hatching event in this neighborhood. There are also areas to go diving at and of course, lots of swimming to be done in the surrounding water as well. It honestly just sets you up for a really fun outdoorsy playstyle and the lot comes with a special trait too, called Oceanic Paradise, which lets you catch rarer fish and find dolphins more easily. It's time to head to Mount Komarebi, and this world comes with the Snowy Escape expansion pack. I want to shine a light on the Yukimatsu area. While most of the lots here are quite similar in what they provide, Kiyomatsu Point in particular is a large 50x50 50 50 lot meaning that you can build some pretty large and impressive things here. What's also awesome about this lot is that you have very close access to the skiing and snowboarding slopes, as well as the snowy hiking trails to the far west of the area. There are climbing walls close to the lot too, and not to mention you also have easy access to start an expedition to the top of Mount Komarebi should you want to. On top of this, the Festival of Snow takes place near the bottom of the ski slopes on Saturday evenings, meaning that you have heaps going on around you. Now let's go to Henford on Bagley from Cottage Living, and I find Cordelia's Secret Cottage to be an awesome lot to play on. I love how it's secluded near the top of a mountain with a running waterfall nearby that also provides access to a fishing spot. The only downside here is that it's a rather small 30 by 20 lot but overall, I love it. I don't know exactly why, but playing on this lot just truly makes me happy. Off to Tartosa we go now, and this world from the My Wedding Stories game pack is just all around beautiful. There are two lots in particular that I want to call out. The first is Piccola Luce, located within the Port Luminoso neighborhood. And while this is a rather small 20 by 20 lot, I feel that it has huge appeal simply by being on its own small little island which is connected to the mainland by just a bridge. It's just so cute! The only thing I will say is that from my experience it can be a bit annoying in that it takes sims quite a while to simply walk from the lot to the main square area with the piazza and shops. The second lot on Tartosa that I want to call out is Refugio dei Pirati, located within the Terra Amorosa neighborhood. And I just find this location to be stunning. 
You're surrounded by greenery with an awesome walking track that's complete with a bridge across a waterfall. And from the lot, you can also overlook the gorgeous lagoon where the waterfall cascades into. You can also very quickly head down and take a dip in it as well. It just feels so relaxing and almost like having your own private little sanctuary at your doorstep. Popping over to Moonwood Mill from the Werewolves game pack, we're going to take a look at the small 20 by 15 lot called New Moon Shack. The reason this lot is pretty standout is that it's super close to four key areas. To the northeast, you have the Moonwood Collective's clan's hangout. To the north, you have the huge stone mountain which you can climb to the top of, providing stunning views and moon petal can be picked here during the night of a full moon. To the northwest, you have Lake Lundvik which is perfect for a swim or a fish, and to the west you have Greg's Shack, a rather dangerous and ominous space which a visiting will likely see you bashed by a rampaging werewolf. We love it. Really, there's just a lot to explore and a lot going on very close by. And the final lot that I want to call out as a standout is Little Falls Nook, which is a 20 by 20 lot located in the Plumbite Cove neighborhood within Copperdale. While this lot is small, it literally has a small lake right on its doorstep, providing an awesome private swimming area and a place to fish. And for some reason, this area just feels a little romantic to me. If you walk across the nearby bridge, then there's also a stunning garden with purple flowers that you can hang out in, and of course, you're just a quick walk away from the theme park located in Copperdale too, which can be rather exciting to visit. You know, we love a Ferris wheel. And with that, we're at the end. That's 15 lots to play on to improve your gameplay. If you enjoyed or found this helpful, then please subscribe and leave a like. I would really appreciate it and have an amazing day. See you later.